<clears throat> okay, so now what we have is a sum that we're trying to find the rule of. All right, you guys can see rather than in a sequence where we would just, well, put, come on. So rather than just go ahead and in finding, and yeah, pass those all the way up, please. Um, rather than just having a sequence where we just have commas between each one of these terms, now we have a sum. However, we're still looking for a general pattern that where we're going to start and where we're going to end and see how much we have. All right? So the easiest way that I like to go and take a look at this is we write our sigma, which is going to represent our sum. We look at this, and what I'd like to always start is always assume that you can start with 1. All right? Then say, all right, well, where are we going to end? Well, if I start at 1, then that will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then I put a 5 up there. That's the easy part, right? Now, let's go and see what exactly is going to be the rule. So if I was going to label these as <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what do I need to do as a rule to be able to, when I plug in that 1, 2, 3, or 4, that I'm going to be able to obtain that rule? or that, that value right, for a sum. So again, I know this gets a little difficult, but start with it as easy as possible. Look for addition and subtraction. right? And let's just start at 3. And remember, we like to break this up as far as a numerator and a denominator. So to go to 3, I could add 4. right? But if I add 4 to 4, does that take me to 15? No. right? Um, look for multiplication. Well, I can't even multiply anything to 7, so maybe let's do a combination. Let's, why don't we multiply 3 by 2 and then subtract, subtract 2. So 3 times 2 would be 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. Let's do it here. 3 times 4 is 12. Minus 2 is 10. We need 15. So multiplication and addition or subtraction or any combination is not really going to work. So the next thing that I like to look for is the squaring function or the power function. So let's go and look at maybe, um, well, we already looked at squaring it. No, we didn't, sorry. Let's look at squaring it. What if I squared 3, which would be 9, and then I subtract 2? Well, if I square 4, that's going to give me 16, which is very, very close. But then I only have to subtract 1. So it's not the same rule. So squaring is not going to work. But how about if I take a power? Now, what I notice about these is these are very similar to the powers of 2. What I mean by that is if I have 2 to the first, 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the fourth, 2 to the fifth. Those are the powers of base 2. Does everybody see that? Do you guys see how very close those numbers are to my numerators? They're the same thing, but just subtracting 1, right? But now here, this is going to be 2 to the first power. 2 to the first power equals 2. So therefore, I need to get this to be 1. So I do know that um, Oh, that can be, yeah. So it would be 2 to the i minus 1. Does that make sense? Because now, whatever number I plug into this front is going to work with us. Now, we look at this and we say, hey, these are the same numbers again. 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, which would be 2 to the 6th power. It's the same thing, right? So how can I write that, though? I know if I, I have to now have 2 to the 2nd. Well, if I put in a 1, how can I get 2 to the 2nd? Yes, Will? 2i uh, plus 1. And there you go. That's it. Done. All right, guys, it takes practice.